Okay, it took us a while to figure this out, um, but we think we're live. We hope we're live. We're down in this little corner of the screen here. So we're going to ask and tackle five most frequently asked questions that we get um, or that people think about when they, when they uh, think about going to a chiropractor. And next week, we'll tackle the other five most frequently asked questions and just kind of dive into some of the concerns that patients have and other healthcare providers that refer patients here. Uh, I'm Dr. Corey Campbell. This is Dr. Jace Peters. We, um, we operate out of Omaha Spine Sport. We're in West Omaha, uh, 156 in Pacific, right next to Mama's Pizza. First question is, for Dr. Peters, uh, is chiropractic safe? Chiropractic is very safe. We, we get that question a lot because I think there's some poor information out there. Generally, when people think of the chiropractor, um, the worst thing that's going to happen is the stroke stuff, um, which is it's definitely out there, but it's very, very rare. I think the most recent research kind of goes like one in a million chance, uh, and they've studied that pretty extensively. Some of that bad information out there that you might hear from different people is with cervical manipulation and the strokes. Um, how they study that generally <coughs> is retrospectively because strokes are so rare anyway, so they say here these people have had strokes and then they go back and look, has this person gone to a medical doctor, a chiropractor, a physical therapist, and whatnot, and then they try to link those two up. And what they've kind of found with the Cassidy study, you've probably heard about that, and then Medicare did a, a huge study with like 1.1 million people. And basically what they found is that you're no more likely to go to a chiropractor or a medical doctor if you've had, if you've had a stroke. So that kind of throws that link out of there. Um, obviously it can happen. I think what generally happens is we kind of attract those people with the headaches and stuff, which is what we treat frequently. And then people just miss it. Like they're in the middle of an episode and they miss it. Here at Omaha Spine and Sport, I think what we do differently is we spend a lot of time in assessment and we're not we would never manipulate a patient that's coming in with some of the signs of uh, a stroke. So that's kind of how we combat it. Obviously it's out there, that's the one you probably hear the most, it's the buzzword, but honestly it's not something we see frequently. Anything to add, Corey? Yeah, I would kind of echo those thoughts. Um, the other thing that I would say to people that are concerned with the stroke aspect is that really if you look at it, the reason our medical malpractice insurance is so low is not by accident. It's not because there's just a small number of chiropractors out there. It's because insurance companies, they don't like to give money away, but they realize that the risk of something happening adversely to that extent is so low that we don't have to carry massive amounts of malpractice um, liability. So. If you just look at malpractice insurance across the health profession board, ours is probably the lowest, um, you know, maybe next to physical therapy because we just don't have that much risk. The other thing, like Dr. Peter says, is that you have to spend the time in the assessment. We do that. And the third thing we do here differently at Omaha Spine Sport is that we, we build safety into our manipulations in that we don't use full end range rotation, which is where you get into trouble with strokes. So if you just build in small amounts of rotation, you can still affect those, those axes of the vertebra and you can still free up the joint in a very safe way. And I think we do that really well here. We don't do a lot of high risk manipulation here and we still can get really good results and get accomplished what we want to get accomplished with it. So I would just add those things um, to that chiropractic safe. The worst that's going to happen after an adjustment is you're going to be sore. Um, we really try to to make everything as comfortable as possible. We want you to feel better when you leave here. If you don't, um, that's not unusual. So sometimes some soreness is, is normal, um, but we'll take soreness over increase in pain um, with any of our adjustments and any of our treatments that we do here, we do more than adjusting. The second question we get asked a lot is, what is the popping sound? I would say, what I tell my patients is that the popping sound is a change in pressure in the joint capsule. It's no different than when you pull your finger and you get your finger to, to kind of crack. There's a pressure gradient in all joint capsules. And if you gap that joint open, even just a small amount, which is what we do with an adjustment, uh, you get a change in pressure and it creates a pop, no different than opening a soda can. Um, and that's what the popping sound is. It's not bones cracking, it's not bones breaking. We're not moving bones from point A to point B. It's, it's seriously just a, a change in joint pressure um, from in the joint capsule. 
And what we do when we adjust somebody is we gap a joint along a specific axis of motion to help restore normal joint motion. And that's what creates the popping sound. Anything to add? Uh, just to add to that, that's perfectly said, is we'll, kind of po we'll post a video. Um, they actually did an MRI of a finger, and when you pop a finger, it'll show you like what happens within that joint. You'll see the little bit of a gapping with the long axis distraction of the finger, and it's just this little pop, and we'll post it from our Facebook page. You can watch the YouTube video. It's pretty cool. It kind of says what we knew all along and what happens in the spine because all the joints basically function the same because they have that capsule and you just change the pressure. Um, so I wouldn't add anything more to that. Third question, most frequently asked. Um, this is one of our favorites. Everybody says that once they go to a chiropractor, they've heard that they have to keep coming back forever. Um, is it true that once I see a chiropractor, ha I have to come back forever? I'll leave that one to you. Uh, one of my, before I get into this, one of my favorite jokes is how many chiropractors does it take to change a light bulb? I know the answer to this. <laughs> Just one, but it'll take 100 visits. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's kind of something that we battle within our profession. We see these lengthy treatment plans. If you Sometimes you can't even call them that because one time a week for the rest of your life isn't really a treatment plan. How we combat that here is we set very structured treatment plans. We're going to see you six to eight visits, and then we're going to do a reevaluation and kind of see where you're at. And then from there, we always try to back off the frequency of care as the patient improves, implement the home exercise program, which is something that we do a little bit different here. So then we'll go from seeing you a couple times a week to hopefully once a week for a couple weeks, and then backing it off to see you later, check up in a couple months, and then you're out the door. We're very condition-based here. We don't do a lot of wellness care, although we do some. Uh, and then we also have contracts with insurance companies that keep us very, very honest and that monitor our treatment plans and how that all plays out. Anything to add there? Yeah, I would just, if you, if you have had problems with that in the past, um, where it seems like it's a very cookie cutter type of protocol, it's three times a week for three months, two times a week for two months, one time a week for one month. You know, just ask your doctor why that is. Um, and why that treatment plan is, is in place. You're, you're, you have to be your own advocate. Um, we here try to be your advocate as well, but you have to kind of be your own advocate when it comes to healthcare. And if something doesn't quite feel right or sound right, you just ask them the reasoning behind it. The reason we treatment plan here, um, the way we do is we need to have a three or four week window to make things happen. We know from numerous studies that we can't make changes in any tissue, whether it's a joint, whether it's a muscle, um, if we don't give it some time to adapt to the changes that we're doing, it's called specific adaptation to an imposed demand. Uh, Dr. Leonard Fay, who started motion palpation, said that years ago. So we need to have at least three or four weeks to make some changes. We know that in three or four weeks, if, if we're doing the right things, we should see positive progress. And then we can modify the treatment plan from there on out. But without a treatment plan that addresses your issues, over a span of three to four weeks, then we really don't have any, any idea of what we're doing uh, with the muscle, with the joint. We, we can't just, we're not a magic bullet. But I would also caution you that really excessively lengthy treatment plans, um, I would say is bordering on a financial model, not a health model. So just ask your doctor why you're having these long lengthy plans and, and why, you know, why it's you know, six or seven months. I mean, there's no reason why some people don't need that amount of treatment, but just make sure that you're kind of your own advocate with, with the treatment plan. We here do three to four week treatment plans to start and then we reevaluate at the end of four weeks. Uh, that seems to work the best for us. It gives us an idea what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and it gives us a chance to succeed with you. So we are on the probably lower end of treatment plans, but we're also not gonna go so short that we don't give ourselves a chance to, to succeed. Fourth question. Um, and I'll pose this to Dr. Peters. What is chiropractic <coughs> most effective for? We get that a lot here as well. Yeah, I think what it is most effective for, like what the research is going to show, is the headaches, neck pain, low back pain. That's kind of where we've really harvest, harvested out our niche within the healthcare field. Um, I think that's, we'll get into it later, but I think that's what medical doctors and other providers are most comfortable sending to us but by no means is that all that we treat. Obviously, if any of our patients are tuning in, we, we've probably treated a lot more issues in them. A um, lot of hips, a lot of shoulders. We treat a lot of runners, so we get the feet, plantar fasciitis, all those, all those fun things. We actually have what we treat cards, so if you're ever in the office, pick one of those up. It kind of details some of 
uh, other things that you might not think of. And I would just have Corey touch on that a little bit more. Yeah, next week we'll dive into some of the myths and misconceptions about the chiropractic profession. Um, there are things that we do treat secondarily that we don't ever like plan to help, but gastrointestinal disorders, uh, breathing, respiration issues, uh, colic, uh, ear infections, things that you hear that you kind of think, well, those are kind of out there. Um, they are kind of out there. There's a study out there called the Bronkfurt Report that basically outlines every single thing that chiropractic is affected for, and it's really just manipulation. He just studied manipulation, what it's good for, what it's not good for. Um, obviously, back pain, neck pain, headaches, those are the, the big things that people come to see us for. Um, but really, it's anything that's involved with the musculoskeletal system as far as what we do here. Um, we treat TMJ issues. We treat shoulder problems, uh, patellofemoral syndromes, bursitis, uh, pelvic floor dysfunction because it's, it has some, some musculoskeletal um, components to it. Uh, we go after the, the functional things, and if we get secondary changes to other things like gastrointestinal, respiration, um, better sleep, like those are, those are some secondary things that show us that we're making some positive changes in the entire system. And we'll talk about this next week a little bit, but the, the exciting research in the chiropractic profession now is in what we do from a biochemical standpoint and from a neurology standpoint. And it's kind of exciting some of the things that they're starting to show that manipulation and chiropractic in general um, does from even a chemical level. So we'll touch on that next week, but it's effective for a lot more than what you think it's effective for. So if you have any questions, we offer free consultations here. Um, you can come in, you can talk to one of the docs, and we can, we can see if we can help you. We can't help everything, but we can, we can definitely try to, try to get you back on the right path. Just to add before we go to our last question, I think what makes us a little bit different is, like Corey said, the Bromford Report just focuses chiropractic is manipulation. What Here, we've, we do a lot more than just the manipulation, so I think that opens up um, the opportunities to be able to treat a lot more. Like we do the dynamic neuromuscular stabilization, we do the soft tissue treatments like ART and Graston. So I think that opens up what we can treat and we can help a lot more people as they walk through our door than perhaps your typical chiropractor that's only doing manipulation. That's what the research equates chiropractic to is just the, the adjustment. But here we do a lot more with the exercise, DNS, ART, all that kind of stuff. So that I would just add that real quick before we go to our last question. That's perfect. Um, and we'll kind of, we'll touch on that in this last question as well. I'll let uh, Dr. Peters ask this one because this is one of my favorite questions. This is, this particularly applies to Corey. Is it true chiropractors, physical therapists, and medical doctors don't get along? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it's so funny because I, many of you may who watching this, if there's anybody watching this. Um, <laughs> Are you no, out there? <laughs> you know that I spent seven years at a place called the Nebraska Spine Center, or if you've taken one of my classes from MPI, um, you know that I, I spent seven years in a, a facility that had orthopedic spine surgeons, physical therapists, physiatrists, staff of you know, 70 or so, PAs, support staff. Um, so it's not true. Like we, and it's not true to the point to where that group of people, this highly specialized orthopedic spine surgery center brought in a chiropractor to offer that service. Um, and we get a lot of medical referrals here. So it's not true that we don't get along with medical professions, uh, physical therapists. We cross refer with PTs as well. We cross refer within the profession itself. Um, there are things that are limited to what we can do, especially in some of the acute cases. So we need help from other professions. Um, and to think that we can fix everything with adjusting soft tissue, functional rehab, we're kind of kidding ourselves. So we have a, a network of really good physicians that we can refer to. There are people out there, however, that, and the profession in, in, in is, is to blame for a lot of this is that we've stuck our flag in the ground. We said that we are so far against and opposed to what the medical profession is doing that we, we're not gonna even try to work with them or integrate ourselves into the medical community, which is up for debate. We're not gonna get into that. But to, to ostracize ourselves has, has kind of set up a stigma that opposing physicians would also look at and be opposed to sending people to chiropractors. And so part of one of the, the reasons why Omaha Spine Sport was 
was started and what it's evolving into is because we want to change that per- perception here, that we're part of overall health care and we're as aggressive a conservative care option as there is available to two people, um, whether it's musculoskeletal or otherwise. Uh, we offer a wide range of conservative care options in one roof here that incorporates manipulation, soft tissue work, reflex muscle activation, uh, functional rehab. We, we refer out for some of the nutritional things, but we can get you started down the right nutritional path. Um, and we have a network of physicians that we use and our, our why is to change how people and other professions look at the chiropractic profession, especially here in Omaha in our backyard, because chiropractic isn't this uh, ethereal, uh, philosophy-driven, um, innate intelligence type of profession. It's very founded in science, and it has a scientific rationale behind all the things we do, um, but it just hasn't been presented that way um, enough for other professions to know that. So there are a lot of medical doctors, PTs, athletic trainers that don't like us, and we understand why part of that is our problem and some of the things that we've done. Um, We're a very antagonistic profession in general because we've been fighting a lot of fights over the years, Um, but now I believe it's time to kind of change that perception and kind of change our, our direction with this profession and start to realize that there are certain limitations to what we can do and that we need help at certain times but that we also can offer a service that a lot of people overlook because they just don't understand it or they're against it because of the overall attitude that the the profession itself has kind of generated in the past. And so that's kind of our why is to change the perception here in Omaha of what chiropractic is it's and, it, and, and the attitude. We're, we're not here to fight against the medical professions. We're not here to fight against PTs or athletic trainers. We want to work with you um, because you're very good at what you do and we're very good at what we do. And if we can combine those things, then the patient wins. And that's really what we're here for. Perfect. <laughs> the only thing I would add is that I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't spend seven years in an interdisciplinary setting, but I did do an internship while I was in school. I spent six months or so at the VA hospital in Des Moines, got to see a bunch of stuff, shadow surgeries, physiatrists. And I think what it comes down to is we spend more time in our assessment and we will recognize if we're really going to be able to help you. And if we're not really going to be able to help you, then the best thing that we can do for you is get you to where you need, which would be maybe you need a medical doctor, maybe you need some medication to get this calmed down before you come back to us and we can really get after the mechanical aspect. So that's all I would add. I think we have a very good relationship um, with physical therapists and medical doctors here in our community. I would urge any chiropractors or students out there to find those relationships within your community. And the best way to do that is just to get out there and meet people, shadow other providers. We do that on a regular basis, monthly basis. We go check in with the providers that we refer to and get referrals from. So that's what I would add to that. And then I think that'll complete our five questions for this week. We don't We haven't really figured this out completely. We can't see any comments at this point. We'll try to check in with that. We'll hold on. Yeah, we can't. So hopefully next week we can uh, maybe make this a little bit more interactive, figure out if people are commenting. We can hopefully answer some questions. Um, And if we do see anything, we'll address it next week. Thanks. Signing off from Omaha Spine and Sport. (laughs) Thanks.